What's up fellas? Today I'm doing a review on this Andelli cold welder. And I'm not doing this for a company. I'm doing this for the welding community. A couple of people a few years back put out some reviews on this machine. And they gave it a terrible review. Um, and I feel like the individuals who created the videos just kind of had a bad a attitude in general because sure, this thing can't be used for a lot of applications, but the way they counted it out and the way they made it look worse than it really is kind of disappoints me because it ended up being a very useful constituent of my workshop. I bought this thing a while back for 500 bucks to do a very important job and I wasn't able to do it. But I ended up not using this machine because everybody online says it's a piece of crap. Well, I got to build a lot of these things and it turns out it's the best welder for the job. You don't need filler metal for certain applications, and this is one of those. I did add filler metal in some spots, but for the most part, this thing's better than a TIG torch. This piece right here is about an inch and a quarter. I'll walk past both sides of it, and we'll see how long it takes to do that. I don't know if I'm a fan of the dang foot pedal, though. So, the other peeve they had about this machine is they said how slow it was, and they even made a video making it look wonkier than slower than it really is. If you set it on auto pulse, it's faster than TIG welding. So that really disappoints me, is that they made me think this thing's so slow you can't use it. Look at how fast I'm welding these two pieces of metal together. I completely disagree with that creator. I'm not going to name no names, but I'm sure you guys have seen this video about this machine. Okay, and that's done. Uh, I can't TIG weld that fast. I don't know about you TIG welders out there. Right there, I let it get away from me just a touch. But um, let's take a look at that other side. That is a beautiful lap weld. And in most cases, that you're not tearing that off of there. If you need more strength, it gives the same welds with filler wire. So as far as how long does it take to do these welds, it's pretty quick. It's faster than I can TIG weld. All right, fellas, the next subject I want to talk about concerning this welder is the aspect of welds breaking. People like to show coupon tests where they take the weld, they subject it to torture, they break the weld, and they say, look at this, aha, it's junk. Look at the bottom of that weld, by the way, though. No sugaring. That's a beautiful attribute of this welder. Anyway, we're going to break this coupon here, but I want you guys to pay attention to the deformation of the piece of metal itself. The forces required to break this weld take us past the point of consideration of its strength. If this object was subjected to forces that damage it that bad, I'm pretty sure the weld is meaningless at this point. we got to be a little bit more intellectual at the evaluation of this device concerning these matters because we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as they say, like everyone else has. Look how bent up that metal is. Whatever this object or trinket was, if it was subjected to those forces, I'm pretty sure it's now trash and the weld isn't a part of the equation. The weld survived the destructive test. The metal did not. The metal's deformed beyond use now. Yeah, sure, I just broke the weld. And they like to say, aha, look at this. Look how bad this, this weld sucks. Well, a lot of welds will never be subjected to the forces shown in that test. And we got to keep that in mind, especially when some of these welds may just be aesthetic and or just you know small pieces of bracket and stuff that aren't bearing a lot of load this thing is totally adequate for that job like the heat shroud I was doing should you weld exhaust tubes together with it no they're gonna get hot and shrink and expand and contract and you're gonna get metal fatigue breaks so no there are some things you can't use this welder on but um, I think it got a really bad rap online I think cold welders got a terrible wrap. They're far faster than what I've shown in the video. You can turn the settings up. I'm just still in the experimental phase here. So the welds are strong enough for most applications. If you break a weld like you see me here in a real life situation, the structure being subjected to the forces is going to be far more damaged than the weld before we reach this point. 
we're looking at 120 degrees of deflection guys how many circumstances do we get in where we deflect the metal that bad look how bent up this is the weld survived that test in my opinion and I'm sticking to that story so here is my 190 amp lap weld is a little cooked just a bit that's 100 on the duration and 35 microseconds on the interval this is the same setting on a lap weld does a really nice lap weld at that setting this is duration set to 50 50 microseconds and it gives us a white to gold lap weld that is extremely hard to perform because again you have to have the electrode right inside that corner and i'm talking one millimeter away in contrast we have the 170 amp with duration 50 and it makes a white weld which is extremely difficult to perform due to the torch to work surface gap this one here is a little bit more reasonable to work with we have a colored weld 170 amps 100 microseconds and 35 microseconds on the duration and we have a little bit better of a corner bead here this is actually a lot stronger than you think people have knocked this machine online and uh, after watching some of the videos other videos from those creators it's they've got kind of a bad attitude about everything in general so you can't always trust what you're you're hearing these welds are absolutely suitable for many applications if you guys know of any other speciality operations that this device can perform uh leave it something in the comment about it because i'm i'm definitely back into it i'm gonna be working with this thing a lot i think i'm very impressed with the welds and that works out pretty good when you're not a welder a little quicker that looks a little nicer I don't have a bunch of little pits like we see in that one there they're not the end of the world they're fine for this application but I'm just trying to learn this tool I do not like the fact that this is not an accurate representation of the amperage see that it's at 170 right now whether you can see it but the stupid thing goes up to 250 when it's only 180 freaking amps I really need to know what amps I'm at but now I'm going off this arbitrary reading whatever I guess it doesn't matter with a tack weld I like to tack weld at 125 amps on this Eastwood I'm tack welding at 170 on this, so whatever that means. So that's my uh, shroud there. Stainless steel. Okay, so a lot of people are looking for the instructions for this machine online, and there isn't any. They don't have any instructions. Essentially, when you're using the cold welder mode, there's two settings here. First of all, you want to make sure that you're set to cold weld. The spot just means when you hit the trigger, it's just going to give you one pulse and that's it. The cold pulse is going to give you a continuous pulse after you hit the trigger until you hit the trigger again. Now, to set how often it fires, you do two things. Hitting this button here 
can see I have my welding time at 100 microseconds. That means the arc burst is gonna last for about 100 microseconds or a tenth of a second, whatever that is. Or is that a hundredth of a second? I believe it's um, 100 microseconds is one tenth of a second. After that, we have our interval. And that means how often do we fire this pulse? How much do we want the metal to cool down? I have my interval set at 35, which means it will fire for 100 microseconds for the pulse. It will then wait for 35 microseconds and then fire that 100 microsecond pulse again. And it just keeps going on like that, like pop, 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 pop. Now, if I wanted to increase that interval, you reduce the microseconds in between shots. So this just tells, tells the welder how long to shut off in between firing. Now, when you're doing lap welds and most welds, you're gonna want a minimum of 100 microseconds of weld time to make it easy to use the tool. You can use it at intervals under that, but it is extremely difficult to do that. All this other stuff here, the hot pulse, I haven't messed with any of that yet. So I can't help you there. We're just going off of this. I'm running about 12 cubic foot per minute of argon. Not very much at all. And I tried using a gas lens on this thing and it didn't work. I did not get nice colored welds. I got all gray welds. So I'm kind of wondering what is going on with my gas lens. This is a number six cup. And I believe that's a 16 gauge electrode, but I'm not sure. But the foot pedal, I don't like it. I go with this. That's all I can tell you. This is not 250 amps. This is actually 180 amps. So you're looking at 90 amps right here. Just kind of give you an idea. Something like that. That's all I got for the instructions. It's just going to take a lot of practice. I'm going to start writing down right here on the side of the machine um what i need for what i'm doing here i'm just using 16 gauge stuff in this test and i gotta say these are some of the most beautiful welds i've ever made this machine can be used for very delicate procedures such as jewelry and other micro welding operations that you may have not saying you can use it for everything by no means this is a speciality welder I'm not gonna stop using these other machines. So to the people who scared me away from this thing for two years, that was a terrible video you posted. This thing is actually a very usable piece of equipment. And now I see why they charged me 500 bucks for it. it. It actually is worth it in some regards. You cannot TIG weld aluminum with this. It's not an AC machine, so give it up. It's only DC. You need AC to TIG weld to clean the metal. So if you're getting a bunch of black crap and you're trying to take aluminum, that's why I'm shutting up.